Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I seen your name was kind of going around uh-huh. a few weeks ago. You got brought up on some, like, showcase talk uh-huh. on the platform out here. Yeah. So I, I do want to get into that. We can get into that. Um, I also want to get your story, too. Okay. Because I know you as, like, like I say, a manager, gift uh-huh. to hands manager. I see you're a promoter. Right. You do a few right. different things. Um, Absolutely. Excuse me. I, I kind of want to start by asking you, what is a ophthalmic technician? I uh, seen you made a post about that. Yeah, yeah. What, what is that? So an ophthalmic technician, I work for an ophthalmologist, which is a medical eye doctor. Okay. So, which is, you know, the eye doctor when you have eye disease, not just, oh, I need glasses. Like if you have glaucoma, you know, or you have a uh, cancer in the back of your eye, just real eye problems. You know what I'm saying? Um that is an ophthalmologist, and I'm a technician. So I'm the girl, you know, you come in, I get you ready to see the doctor, dilate your eyes, check your vision, measure you for glasses, all that good stuff. How long have you been doing that? 20 years next month. 20 years? 20 years. Yes. So I'm sorry, I feel like you know about, you probably know a lot about it, uh, about that. Oh, absolutely. My little brother actually fucking went to the doctor like two years ago. They told him he had glaucoma, which kind of threw me off. I was like, isn't that like, don't old people usually get that? Usually. But yeah. now if you have an injury... A lot of times, younger people can get it from an injury. Like if you, like when he was a kid, like if you ever got hit with something, a lot of times once you grow up, you can develop glaucoma. But usually, that is an older people's disease. Generally yeah. speaking, what's the, what's the, what's like some common things you'll see young people come in there for? Um, usually with young people, problems with contacts. They got an ulcer because they sleep in their contacts, things like that, or pink eye, and you know, little basic stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, most of our patients are 70 plus. Like, okay. if I see a young person, I'm excited. You're excited. <laughs> or, you know, something's very wrong with them. Right. Um, I'd be like, ooh, a young one today. Yeah, so you want, okay, so you want to just tell us a little bit about just coming up, early life, how you got into doing that, and okay. also, like, just into the kind of the creative space of it. Absolutely. So, as far as ophthalmology, it was just one of those things where I never planned, you know, for that to be my career path. I was in college, you know, I graduated high school, went to college, ended up getting pregnant, dropped out of school. Um, and um, once I dropped out of school, you know, because I was pregnant, so then I had to find a job, you know. So I ended up going through a temp service, and I um, got a job. It's called a visual field technician. So people with glaucoma, that's one of the main tests that we give them. So I started out there, you know, doing that, through a temp service, got hired, like, whatever, 90 days later. And then I just moved my way up through the company. I done been a supervisor. I done, you know, been a doctor's assistant. I done done everything you could do there. But, yeah, I've been there 20 years. So that's how I got started there. I love it, you know. All at the same company. All at the same company. Never worked anywhere else. Tired what I sent us, yeah. So I I love what I do. So I'm kind of, like, stuck there because I really, you know, absolutely love what I do. But it never was planned. It just was one of those things. What did you originally go to college for before um, you dropped out? Computer analyst. That was gonna. Okay. That was my major, and I did like two years. I was in my second year when I ended up getting pregnant, and then I just dropped out. Mm. So, what about before that? Like, where were you born and raised? What was like Suffolk, some early life? Suffolk, like? Suffolk. Suffolk. Oh, yeah, you Suffolk. heard of Suffolk? Yeah, yeah, heard of okay, Suffolk. Yeah. Okay. People think a lot of people. I like they haven't heard of Suffolk or Suffolk the country, but yeah, born and raised in Suffolk, still live in Suffolk, never lived anywhere but Suffolk. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, when we think of the country, I guess we're thinking about Gloucester, Smithfield. Exactly. But a lot of people that I come in contact with, because even though I'm from Suffolk, you know, especially with me being in this whole creative community, like, I'm always Virginia Beach, Norfolk. You know, like, that's where everything and everybody is. And that, and they when they say, where you from, Pre? I'm Suffolk. Like, what? They be acting like a lot of people never even been to Suffolk, which is crazy to me. Suffolk, they, is that where the, they put Rivers at, or is that Portsmouth? That's Portsmouth. Oh, the, the casino. Uh, I've never been to the casino either. Rivers is cool. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I've been saying that, too. Like, the scene pretty much exists out here, like, in Norfolk, Virginia Beach. Right. It doesn't really, you're not really going to find much. It's, like, sporadic little events here and there in other right. cities. But out there, you'll literally go to a bar, and it'll be just filled with creatives. Exactly. And you just won't see that Everything anywhere. is on that side. Everything. How'd you get into, like, just doing creative stuff out here? So how I got into it was um, a friend, well, not actually my cousin, my cousin. Shout out to my cousin Crystal. It's my cousin, my favorite travel agent. Um, but 
she introduced me to an artist um, named LaRon Bishop. Like, they were friends, and they were cool or whatever, and they was hanging out, going to a bar or whatever one day, and she just invited me. So I went, you know. Um, we just, you know, was talking cool. He's telling me, oh, you know, I'm into music. I make music, blah, blah, blah. And me, I've always been into music, like, always since, like, a little kid. You know what I'm saying? I, I was always, especially rap. Like, I was the female where everybody else listened to Mary J. Blige. Like, I'm listening to N.W.A. and stuff like that. So I you always said, love rap. <laughs> not that you said, fuck Mary. <laughs> nah, for real. Like, that was me. Like, I ain't do no R&B, ain't none of that. So, anyway, so, you know, when he was like, oh, I'm an artist, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'll start coming out to some of your events or whatever. So, anyway, me and him became friends. We became real cool. Started going out to, you know, the showcases and stuff he was performing at back then. And this was like, ah, man, what year was this? This was probably like 2008, maybe. 2008? Jeez. Yeah, 2008. What was the scene like at that time? The scene, the scene was cool. Um... You know, um, this thing was cool back then. Shout out to CEO P Double XL, um, Dirty Workers. They was the ones like you know that was throwing a lot of the showcases back then. But um, but it was cool, you know. So um, started going to shows with him, meeting all the artists, you know, and I just became like a regular, like a fan, you know what I'm saying. And that's why even as a promoter, like a lot of people love and they respect me because they knew me before I was me, you know what I'm saying. Before I was Capri the Bestest, they knew me just as being a fan in a crowd, singing everybody music, buying everybody CDs and stuff like that. But um, so yeah, so like I said, that's how I got introduced to the scene through Lamar Bishop, and then just meeting everybody and. You know, and then just one day, um, CEO P, which, like I just said, he's one of the guys who was throwing the showcases at that time. Um, they hit me up. They was like, you from Suffolk, right? I'm like, yeah. They was like, well, they was they started this series. I don't know if you ever seen it around, but it don't. we don't really do it anymore. But it was called the Jack of Spades Seven City Showcases. So basically it I know Jack be, of Spades is a, is a DJ on... Um, correct, 103 James. 103 James, yeah. Yep. So it, I haven't heard of that, though. Okay, but this is, like, years ago. So, basically, we would have a Suffolk show, a Norfolk show, a Portsmouth show, a Virginia Beach show for all the seven, eight cities. You know what I'm saying? Because have you ever heard of the eighth city? What's the eighth city? The eighth city is basically, it's really a movement. It was created by Ghetto Chris, um, and it's a combination of cities, which are some of the cities like you just named, like the Gloucesters and the Ivors and the Smithfields and the Franklin, like the cities that don't, you know, when you say seven cities, even though they surround us, they're not included. Well, what are the seven The seven cities is what? Newport News, Chesapeake, Hampton, Virginia Beach, Norfolk. Suffolk. Suffolk. Portsmouth? Yep. So that's Gloucester's not even in that then? No. That's like a, oh, that's like a county, really. Exactly. Like, okay. It's a county. So, so, yeah, so he started a movement called the Eighth City, and... Anyway, so we they would do the eight city shows. So, like I said, he knew I was from Suffolk. So he was like, you want to help me put together the showcase? Because by this time, I'm on the scene for like two or three years, you know, just, you know, raving and knowing all the artists. So I did. So I helped him put together that Suffolk show. Well, I actually put it together. I put the show together. It was at P Club Paradigm. I don't know if you never heard of that, but that was a club out in Norfolk. That's where all the showcases was going on at that time. Okay. But um, it was packed out. It was crazy. From there, I never stopped. So that was with Jack of Spades. That was with Jack of Spades. Like, and what year was that? This was 2012. This is 2012. So 2012. you run around with him. You putting together this these showcases mm -hmm. with him. Um, did yeah. What, what did you learn, kind of, with that? Like that was your first experience doing this. Mm -hmm. Anything you learned in those times that you kind of took with you moving forward? I mean, I don't know. I just, I just love. I just really. I don't know. After that first show, I just fell in love with this. You know, I really fell in love with the scene and just, you know, giving the platform. Like it was just, it was just, it was just fire. Like I said, I just, and I just kept going. And I still, I was working with Jack of Spade initially when I first started. I continued to just do Jack of Spade showcases. So basically, at his showcases, me being a promoter, we putting the show together. But Jack of Spade would just show up. You know what I'm saying? He's on 103, as he's always been. And kind of so, like, like the face of it. Kinda, exactly. Yeah. And then, not only that, um, at the end of the night, you know, he would pick a couple songs, whoever he felt like was the hottest, and put them on the radio. Mm. So that was the whole kind of catch of the show. Like, you know, you, you know, a couple artists going to get on the radio. So, like I said, I did that for a couple years um, with him. And then... Um, you know, I just kind of branched off and just did my own thing. 
and created a million entertainment. What are some challenges you faced doing these showcases? And, and also just like, because um, I feel like the showcase is, is, is kind of like a lot of other things, like a podcast or, or any other media. It's something that, it's like an addition to our scene. Absolutely. It's like some, any, everybody can kind of just add stuff onto it. Absolutely. So what did you learn or like what was some challenging stuff about throwing those showcases that you learned and also um, like just building the scene up, like just kind of around that? Right. So, I mean, you know, challenges just dealing with, uh, you know, all the different personalities and egos and artists, you know, those are the, the main challenges um, as far as putting together a showcase. But, um, you know, like like you said, the showcase showcases are just a part of the scene, like, which I think I feel like a lot of people don't understand. They feel like the showcase scene is all it is, you know. But a lot of the artists feel like that too. Like, one of the main things I try to tell artists is, it's really more to music and it's more to it than just, oh, trying to get on this show to perform or going in the studio and record your music. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. The way I see it is like showcases, um, open mics, everything we have to offer as far as a local scene, mm -hmm. I feel like it's just tools that artists should utilize mm -hmm. for their development. Exactly. So like, for example, like there's, um, I go to Utopia Fenny a lot. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, it's absolutely. Virginia Beach. Um, so they do open mics like every month. Mm -hmm. And then they also have like a book show mm -hmm. once a month they do. So literally as an unknown artist, whatever you think your exposure is by going Utopia, right. I don't even think that should matter. Right. I think it should be more about like practicing your craft. Exactly. So you could be an unknown artist, go there, start going there once a month, hit, hit the open mics. Right. Through that, uh, not only do you practice your craft and actually get better, right. you meet people. Exactly. And literally just like it can grow organically. Exactly. So I, th I think people have this uh, like this notion of I need to, if I'm doing a showcase or if I'm doing anything, I need to be hella exposure. They're, they're right. looking at it as far as like the the exposure point of it. Right. But I'm looking at it more of a of from like a developmental side. Right. And I, I feel like I definitely agree with you. Like you hit it on the nose. The, the main purpose, you know, especially open mics is for me, that is where you go to perfect your craft. Like a lot of artists, even a lot of these artists that got big names on the internet, they don't even know how to hold a mic at a show. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't never been to a, a lot mic. of people now. They'll they'll blow up before they even have a show. Exactly. Like Ice Spice. I think Ice Spice first show was like when she blew up. When she blew, blew up. Yeah. But yeah, you know. I, but I definitely agree. Like that is the main purpose of it, which you which you should be utilizing open mics and showcases for is for one, for practice. You know, that's the main thing. Um, trying out new songs in front of a crowd, seeing how people react to the new music, learning how to perform, you know what I'm saying? As I said, learning how to hold a mic and just learning how to work the crowd and work the stage, you know, meeting people, networking, meeting other producers, meeting other artists that you gain, you know, that you can network with and build with from there. And it's all a stepping stone. You know, like you say, you started the open mics, you start to, you know, develop your wave, then you get to bigger showcases, then you get to bigger stages and all of that, you know what I'm saying? So... That's why I tell a lot of artists, um, because I'm connected to a lot of different things, not just open mic showcases. Like a lot of the industry shows that come here, um, sometimes me and my team put them on, but even if we're not, the promoters are calling me saying, hey, it's, it's not even February yet, and I done got four calls about who should I put, you know, on this op on this stage to open up for this industry artist? And, of course, I'm choosing artists that I know that's been through the circuit and they understand, they know how to perform because there's more to it than just having dope music. Like, you can have dope music and you can get on the normal stage and don't know how to perform, then what, what's the point, you know? <clears throat> so, okay, so what do you think is the backlash that you were getting? for the showcases um it's like well i mean in, in the in the situation in particular that you were referring to um well well i'll say even in general it's like showcases get a bad rap and it's because they feel like oh i ain't gonna keep coming to the same venues and performing oh the same people are there oh some of them sometimes they say oh only rappers are there but I don't know what shows they going to because it's not a Millie E.N.T. show because, you know, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, my shows be back, you know what I'm saying, with fans. But, you know, but that, those are the kind of things that people um, say about showcases. You know, that's like the backlash of it or whatever. They feel like it's not helping you grow. But what they have to understand is 
like you said earlier, it's a part of your development. Now, if you want to continue to do a local show for five years after you've perfected everything, that's on you. Like, the artist got to realize it's on you to grow. Like, these platforms are here to help build you. But once you feel like you've gotten everything you get need out of it, then move on. Like, you should be growing. And if you're not growing... You can't blame the promoters. You need to blame yourself because it's, it's really, it's your career. It's on you to grow and get bigger stages and, you know, get booked out of town or whatever it is that you, you know, feel like you should be doing. But, you know. So they ultimately feel like the, and I don't know what you charge uh-huh. or how you run the business for a showcase. So yeah. they ultimately feel like it's not worth it to pay the money to be on the showcase? Well, in some cases, but, you know, as for a million entertainment, I don't charge for slots. I actually pay artists to perform if you have a fan base. Um, So, again, like you was referring to, you know, the situation, how we actually met. Um, People, sometimes people get on the internet and they talk and they don't have a clue what they're talking about. But um, at my showcases, I pay artists. If you... On the showcases. Now, if at an open mic, you come in, you perform, and at the end of the night... I give away gifts. You can get video shoots, photo shoots. I also run a promotional company, Costa Media. So um, we do business cards, flyers, posters, all that. I give away all that kind of stuff, you know, to, you know, about five or six artists might win something at the end of the night. Um, but as far as showcases, like I said, I don't charge. You don't have to pay anything to be on my show. But you can make money. If you have fans, you know what I'm saying? Selling tickets so, and stuff like that. Well, not you don't even have to sell tickets at my shows, but you have to have fans. So basically how it works is, um, let's use an artist, for example. I'll use my artist, Young Trap. So what happens is that the girl at the door, you walk in, you pay your $10 to get in. She's going to say, who did you come here to see? And they say, Young Trap. Okay, so we then we keep a tally. So based on how many people Young Trap brought, that's how much, you know, you get paid based off of that. So pretty much what I do is I get them half of what they bring in. If you bring 10 people in, you get paid $50. If you bring, you know, 50 people in, you get half of that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Because people got to understand, which I see a lot is people, oh, I ain't performing unless they paying me. But are you worth them paying you? Like, people feel like you should get paid off your talent, but that's not how the business works. The business, at the end of the that's day, the, show, the show business works, it, how many people you bring out. Exactly. Like, why do you think uh, people book these celebrities? Because they're going to double their dr- money. Dr- you know what I'm crowd. saying? Yeah. Like, that. that's why we're booking Rick Ross <clears throat> or Young Jeezy, uh, Huncho, whoever it is, you know, because they're going to make their money back. So, you know, why independent artists feel like they should just get paid just because you're talented, it's a lot of we have a lot of talented people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I, th- I think people but don't it's realize. It's a return on investment. Like if, I, yeah. if I'm gonna pay you a thousand dollars to perform, you better be bringing two hundred people in here. You know what I'm saying? I better make and be, at least be making a thousand. Exactly, by, uh, because we are regular people. So yeah, people don't understand that this this is art, but you have to create a business around it, or exactly. it's just not sustainable. You could do one show and lose money. You could do a couple shows and lose money. Right. But ultimately, it's going to end because you just can't fund it forever. Exactly. So if you want to, if you want it to keep going, you have to make money somehow. Right. Um, I always like the idea of everybody selling their own tickets. Right. And I split the money. So right. if you got five hours on a lineup, everybody right. sell your tickets. Right. Whatever it is, we split the money half and half. Right. And, and, that's, like and that. that's basically what I do just without the tickets. I like you do it kind of on the back end. Right. Because yeah. what I used, to, I used to do when I first started, um, I used to do it with the tickets. They would get 10 tickets. They would sell them. You give me half. You keep half. Because, of course, we still got to pay for the venue. We still got to pay oh, yeah, for, for security. Sure. We got to pay the DJ. We got to pay the host. We got to pay the door girl. We got to pay for the flyers. Like, you know, promoters aren't out here just eating off artists. Like, this, it costs to throw a showcase. You know, it's not free. Mm. But, um... But, yeah, I used to do with the tickets and, like, split it. But then, you know, you just got so many complaints. Oh, artists, you know, get tired of selling tickets, you know. So I'm like, okay, well, let's create this. And so I started this back in 2017, whereas you ain't even got to sell no tickets. Just tell them, come to the door, say your name, and, you know, you get you get paid. So. And then you're also touching on um, there being kind of majority artists at these showcases. I've yeah. noticed that not just at showcases, just right. pretty much with the scene out here. Right. It's a, I feel like I've said it before, but it's it's the same two or three hundred people right. that show up to our events. Right. And I feel like we need that because that's our that's kind of our foundation. Right. And we could just kind of grow from there. Right. But I think it is a problem that we've we've been trying to figure out too is how do we reach 
everyday people out here that don't know about right. us. Because there's literally thousands of people out here that love live music and want to go to a show. Right. But they just simply don't never heard of us. Right. They don't, know it's, they don't even know what's happening. Right. I mean, it's that's all in the promotion and marketing. You know what I'm saying? That's all in the promotion and marketing. We just all, even as a promoter, like as a promoter, Anybody that know me know I have my own fan base. I have people that come to my shows just because I'm throwing it, you know, and coming to see, oh, let's see who she got tonight, you know. But even as an artist, that's a part of building your fan base. You know, like you, we all have to, if we're having an event, it's our event. Like you have to promote it and market it so that we get different people in because we all know word of mouth is everything. So if I tell you about the show, you come, you enjoy it. Next time you're going to bring them with you, you know what I'm saying, type of thing. But I feel like it's just promotion and marketing. Like that's just really the only way to get the word out and let people know, you know, what we got going on over here. And, and you know, just have something worth a value, you know, have quality events and people will continue to come back. What do you um what do you think the scene is missing right now if anything? Cuz I see a lot of people talking trash about the scene, yeah. saying it's trash, it's this that. Yeah. And I feel like as somebody I've been creating out here since 2017. Right. So, I think at this point we have the most unity I've seen right. and we have the most amount of people that are ready for the right. next step. Right. So, anybody that's saying that's like it's trash, I just feel like they're either not tapped in enough right. or they're just not doing enough. Right. So, and, I don't know, what, what do you think about that? You know, I a lot of times is people aren't tapped in. Like a lot of times the people I see giving opinions, like they don't, they don't, they don't be around. Like they don't be contributing to anything. So um, I think that plays a part in it. Um, but at the same time, you know, people gonna have their opinion. You know, and I, I just try to, I try to learn just to let people have their opinion. But I mean, I feel like as a whole, um, I mean, this area is, it's just a I love Virginia. I've been here my whole life, but it's just a tricky area. Like, we don't have the resources. Our market is different, you know, than a lot of the big cities. So, you know, what we need to do to, you know, to make this scene better, that that's a really a tough question. You know, just stick together is the main thing and just keep building, you know, but people that's always trying to tear it down, they don't, they don't help the equation, you know what I'm saying? I would say what I want to see, two things, mm -hmm. is literally go viral okay we need more people to go viral right make a make a impact and make a splash that people see out of the area right that's that's something that we all have to take a responsibility for ourselves right. and initiative you got to go viral right whatever you do make sure it makes people see it from out of the area right and then once that happens um give back to the area right shine the light on the area right and what that means is not only people that you know see right. people get into this thing out here where they only fuck with and right. and show a lot of people that they have a relationship with right. like that are their friends right 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 i'm kind of past that right. I, I have this i have this this idea of we're all from va we from the seven right if you win i win right ultimately it's more light being on the area right. so i think people need to put their egos aside a little bit right. and and just um Think of us as as one a little bit. Let's right. let's move as one a little bit. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. I feel the same way. If you're from Virginia and you winning, like I'm supporting you. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, especially of course if you dope and you making you know good music. But I definitely agree. Like, but a lot of people they ain't like that. If it ain't them. They ain't saluting it. They mad. They on the internet talking trash. You know, like that's just haters. Like, hey, hey, see people like that. Know. You know, you they'll never do shit. Right. Because you see how people are gonna take their wins when you see how they take other people's wins. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, so I, also that's also an important. Feel like uh, no, we should take too. Like people are like yeah, support VA, support this. But also let's not forget you got to be dope. Right. Just because you're from the area doesn't mean you get automatic support. Exactly. You got to earn that. You, you got to earn that earn love. It. You know and what I'm that's saying? the thing I think a lot of people miss. You know, they you you have to earn it. Like we, man, I, I've been doing this for so long. I I it's, I can't. It's I probably know thousands of artists. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that's. If it the main feedback or the disgruntlement I get from people is people feel like, oh, she don't show me love, like she showed them love. But like a lot of y'all, a lot of people don't really work hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, or your product is not they be tweeting though, they be like working hard. <laughs> I'm putting in work right now. Working in silence is not right up now. It's a part of of what I like, you know, and at the same time, like I tell people, 
just because I don't like it don't mean nothing. You know, like, it's people out here that don't like Jay-Z. Like, he's a freaking billionaire, but it's still people that don't like him. So you definitely got to keep working regardless of who rocking with you and who not. But a lot of people just need to do better, you know, with, with what they putting out, you know? Mm. Okay, I so we, t- we touching on showcases a little mm. bit. Um, So you also threw pre-day, right? Yes, that's we, my birthday party. That's your birthday party. So we, yeah. had, we had Stu Money up here recently. He was telling us he was going to host that. Okay. Um. So, yeah, you want to tell us a little bit about pre-day? Yes, and um. Because I think he also said that you had Jeezy on it last year, right? Yes, so last year. That. Oh, that's dope. Okay, I got to watch that interview. No, so, that was yeah. yeah, you got to watch it. The Stu Money <laughs> shit is hilarious. That dude, Have you seen our, just side note on Stu, have you seen that skit we did when he was, like, in the dark room? No. You, I, I got to send you that. You're going to Yes, you. I haven't seen any of that. <laughs> it's I it's called seen. Dance Trends Exposed on YouTube. No, you have to send that, <laughs> to, send me. that to me. I love Stu. Yeah. So Stu, yeah, Stu, Stu is one of the best artists out here. Like, I, I've been rocking with Stu for a long time. But, so, yeah, so pre-day, um, last year, um, for pre day, so um, my partner, like I told you, I'm a, um, um, I'm a partner in a print business, Costa Media. So my partner, that was basically his birthday gift to me. Jeezy is my favorite artist, like ever, like mm. ever. Everybody that knows me knows I love that man like so bad. So anyway, so for my birthday last year, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, yeah. what, what? he booked Jeezy for your birthday. Yes, you. he booked him for my birthday on my birthday on my birthday, December the sixteenth. And um, so yeah, well, so we, he brought Jeezy for me on my birthday. You know, on my birthday, but pre day is um, but again, that was two thousand and twenty two. So pre day is an annual thing you do. Pre day is annual. How many have you done so far? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. You asked me questions I don't know. Okay. Now I gotta go look it up and see when the first pre day was. I don't know. But, you know, so pre day, like I say, it's an annual celebration of me. Um, actually, Leron Bishop, which is the artist I mentioned earlier that introduced me yeah. to the scene, he gave it the name pre day. Okay. He um he gave it the name pre day. But, you know, it's a celebration of me. Um and you know, it's it's a party. You know, it's a party. And what I normally do is I grab a couple artists that I feel like had my favorite songs of that year. Um, and they come, you know, they come perform the one song, which is whichever my favorite song is from them. And then we party. Who'd you so, have this year? This year I had um, Anaya Perry. Y'all, you ever heard of Anaya Perry? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so she's, she's, from, she's from Norfolk. But she, um, she's from Norfolk, but right now she lives in, like, Northern Virginia or whatever. But she, um, she has, like, a million followers. She went super viral, um, like, off her comedy skits. Like, she was, she does, she used to, I don't think she does them anymore. I think now she's just totally focused on music. But she used to do, um, like, these comedy skits, and she went super viral off those. But now she's making music, and she makes dope music. But y'all got to check her out. And I appear. What was, maybe I might know her skit. Like, what was the viral skit she had? Oh, it's a bunch of them. You know? Oh, he he said if Anaya yeah, Perry don't. She, okay, okay. She definitely yeah. got that Timbo cosign. Um, but Anaya Perry, Alondo Jackson, he was on it. Um, who else did I have? Big Joe. Alondo Hart, too. I fucking Yes, with Alondo. listen. Hey. That was my first show that Alondo has ever been a part of. Like I I've been a fan of Alondo for a long time. So, um, but he's never been on my platform until pre day. So I was very gracious and yeah, I, I love Alondo. He <laughs> He's he's amazing. He, bro, he's one but, of the ones for real. Yeah, he is one of the ones. So I'm ready for him to you know tweet back up and like really. He been he been he been on a run right now. Yeah, he, he he's is. dropping R and B Julio on yeah. Valentine's Day. He's been doing like a bunch of live performances. Right. And shit. Yeah, yeah I, I've been see I see him and share them all. Like I really. Bro, I've been um, talking to him since Julio. In like yeah. 2017, 18. Yeah. I didn't know who the fuck I think, he was. What's but the like, first that song, song I heard from? Was it Julio? Was it? No, I think it was Bossed Up. Yeah, that was, one, that was one of the ones from I think too. it was bossed up. And I was just like, who is this kid? Because, you know, I, I remember po- I posted on Facebook. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I'm like, who is this kid? Like, who is Alondo Jackson? You know, then everybody's like, oh, you're from Norfolk. You know, they call him Fatty, too. So they was like, oh, da, da, da. And then, you know, I ended up following him on Instagram. But, yeah, I, I he is he is, he one of them ones. Like, he really one of them ones. He is special. But um, Alondo was up there. Big JoJo two times was up there. Um, Pretty Loco, I don't know if you ever heard of any of them. She was up there. Who else was on pre-day? Um, 
North Block Keys. Like, it was a time. We had a ball. So you, you naming a bunch of artists I'm not even hip to. I got I to get yeah, hip. Yeah, you got to get hip to them. Uh, they are they are really dope artists. All of them. Every one of them. Like, also, Pre-Day, like, people be mad. Pre-Day is one of them shows where artists be mad that they can't get up there, you know, because it's always like that. But, yeah, they they all are dope. Pretty Loco. She's about to open up for Queen Key. Um, on the twenty fourth, like yeah, it's, yeah, so it's, it's a whole, it's a whole lot of artists. It's hard to keep up, you know. Even for me, even for a person that's tapped in to artists that rock with me and, and ones that you know, like I, I try to stay in tune, but it's hard. No, it's, it's, it's hard, all, every yeah. hour. It's a new artist. Bro, Karen, emerging. Karen helps me out with a lot of. <laughs> I can't be hip to every single thing, right, so he'll put me on with it's shit. Um, also, I like. Uh, so, so you saying pre day is kind of run as a party? Um, I mm -hmm. feel like that's maybe we can get into that too. Yeah. Um, it's kind of how how the shows are out here are ran. So mm -hmm. the the best way I've seen it done, I, we've talked about this before too, is uh, you you heard of Disc Freak. Mm -mm. So Disc Freak is an event that. That's, they actually is kind of on a pause right now, but they uh -huh. were throwing a few of them like on that side of the water. Okay. And basically, the setup of how they do it is more like a party instead of a show. Right. And like, uh, we had a cult up here like a year or two ago, and he kind of explained it to me. But uh, the whole idea behind it is it's a more enjoyable show for the fan, mm -hmm. for the person that's there. Because instead of like, if you put like 10 artists in a lineup mm -hmm. and you, they're all doing a few songs, whatever, four or five songs. Um, you actually get fatigued as, as a fan Absolutely. watching them by just sitting there and trying to focus on these people. So the way they would do it is they'll actually just have a DJ spinning right. and make it more like a party, dance and club vibe. Right. And then throughout the night, they'll only bring up like one or two artists that right. will do one or two songs. Right. So it's like while they already get people in that mood with right. the DJ and then when it's already up, they slip in exactly. an artist exactly. do a song or two, exactly. and I feel like that that way um, the art whoever's there it like resonates with the fan even more. It makes, exactly. It's, you know it's, I mean? uh, uh, listen, like I, I've been doing pre day like that since I started, and again those are the best events because for one, you like you say you get people that's not gonna come to a showcase like. You know, people that I ain't. Most I ain't people just want to go out and get perform, drunk. They want to go out and get drunk. Exactly. Maybe shake a little they ass. Party, you yeah. know. So um, and it's crazy because last year I did a few events um like that. I had a my first pool party, and I did the same thing. It's a pool party. We partying, but I brought a couple artists just to come in. You know, gave them five minutes each. And I actually just posted that what maybe two days ago. I said my best events of twenty thirteen of twenty two thousand and twenty three were parties, you know, where I just had a few special performances. And I said I want to do more of that this year because it really does bring, uh, you know, a different crowd, like a different, you know, like it, it's it's just dope. And they pay more attention to them, uh, everybody. And, and again, you got to get the right artists too. The right like artists, you have to uh, have the right artists for that type of vibe. And so when I did it on the pool party and pre-day, like, everybody loved it. You know, people who never been to shows, they don't come to showcases. Oh, who is that? Well, let me follow them, you know? Because a lot of times people don't give artists a chance. You know, we, we know how that works. But, but yeah, so I'm definitely going to be doing more of the party-type shows. Um, I won't even call it a show, but the more of the parties this year because they seem to hit harder they even are, from the exposure uh, aspect, you know? And I feel like it's just um, that way you kind of, you thinking more about the 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 service you're providing for people. Right. Because at the end of the day, like artists might think of it as, no, this is like about me. I want to be up here and perform. People see me. But no, right. at the end of the day, we, you're as an artist, you're fulfilling a service for a fan. Right. That That's that right. you they're they're almost like your boss. It's not about you for real. Right. So a, as throwing an event, the number one thing it should be what is the experience going to feel like for the people that are attending exactly. at this event. It's not, it's are, not, you, the artist almost matter. not yeah, that. That's what really matters. For that's me. what like, matters. They're the ones. I'll, another thing I always say is, you don't need a label. You need the fans. Like the fans is what we need. The fans is what sustains the artist. You know what I'm saying? So, catering to the fans is very important. You know. Also, you have so okay. So you have something going on right now for the Love of Virginia Challenge. Uh huh. What's up with that? Whose so, beat is that? I see it's, different it's people rapping on that beat. It's an industry beat, actually. Okay. It's an industry beat, actually. And I said I was talking to somebody um, online the other night, and one of the challenges, I said, next time I'm going to try to use an in, um, independent producer. Um, but I always, I, I do these challenges from time to time, and I generally go with industry beats only because it's familiar. And because, again, my goal is always to reach the people, you know. Like, I'm connected to a lot of people, not just music. Like, I, you know, I want people that 
again, wouldn't normally click on a, a video that I'm posting to listen. So that's why I normally use industry beats. But, you know, it, it's crazy because that challenge actually was started from the drama. Okay. So, you know, after that incident happened, you know, online or whatever, the next morning, shout out to My Block Live. Um, you know who My Block Live is, right? I haven't met him, but... Yeah, okay, yeah. but you've seen the platform, yeah. you know. But the next morning, he hit me... Well, he posted on Facebook. He just tagged me in a post, and he was like, any artist that been on a Millie ENT showcases, um, I'm going to give away two free My Block Lives. So basically, mm. you know, he was just trying to turn a negative into a positive. You know what I'm saying? Like... He he knows me personally. He's been knowing me for years. He knows what I contribute. He knows that I put in way more than I ever got out of the scene. So he knows me. You know, like, he knows everything that I do. So he was just trying to turn that negative around. So he gave away two free My Block Lives. So how he did it was send a song. Everybody send their tracks in by whatever time. And he picked whatever he deemed the best two songs. Out of people that been on your showcases. Out of people that okay. been on my showcase. Because yeah. he was just showing love to my showcases, you yeah. know, because my showcases was what it was attacked. So um he did that. That he was picked, attacked. <laughs> yeah. he, he picked two winners. And from there, everybody started hitting me up. When they saw his post and they saw me post, like, you know, shout out Chris. Thank you. Da 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 da. Then I had another guy, my cousin actually, he was like, you know what? I'm gonna pay for a free video on another platform. And then from there, it just kept going and going. It was like a, you know, it was, it was, it was crazy. So then these people giving me all these gifts, and I'm like, how I'm gonna pick who I want to, you know, like I didn't. So I was like, let's start a challenge, and and make people rap for it. So that's where the challenge came from, and that's why I called it for the love of Virginia because something that was intended to be negative turned out to be super positive and blessed me, my brand, and all these different artists are going to get blessed with all these free visuals, you know what I'm saying, and gifts. So so the winner yeah. of the For the Love of Virginia Challenge gets a My Block Live Well, no, video. no, no. The My Block Live, the two that he gave away free, he chose those based on who, okay, okay. whose songs he liked the best. And I think he chose Mar P and um, um, Lonzo. But like I say, other uh, platforms and brands start reaching out like, hey, well, I want to donate too. Like, I want to donate a visual. So what's the package so, right now? What's the winning package? So the winning number one package is you get a free freestyle on Who's Next 757. Okay. You know, I, normally I, I know you him. do have yeah. to, you know, the, the, you have to pay to get on that platform. So um, you get a free freestyle video up there. You get to headline one of my showcases and pay regardless if you bring fans or not. Because, you know, like I say, it's, it's based on if you bring fans, whether you get paid. How much they getting paid, though? Ah, they don't know that yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the, the headliner will get paid. You know, I'll give them something on top. And then, of course, if they bring fans, they get even more. But And then they'll get their single spun on Hot 91. So the winner will get that. And then the second place winner will... um went a free video on this platform called The Session. It's a new platform. Um, and then I have, is, like... Is that what Alondo did recently? No. That's, oh, that's a therapy session. That's a therapy yeah, session. Okay, yeah, I yeah. actually just gave away two free, free... I actually gave away two free videos to that as well. Okay. Um, not associated with the challenge, but I actually picked Stu Money as one. And then um, an artist called Day Cools. Um, Okay. So, um, but yeah, that that's a dope platform. Like, shout out to Pick. Pick is the owner of that um therapy sessions, and I feel like that's really dope. And, and it's just, yeah, that's that's amazing. But shout out to him. But yeah, so you know, like I say, I was I had got all these gifts to give away to artists, and I didn't want to like pick and choose. So I was like, let's do a challenge. You know, I got three judges, and we'll see the top winners. Um. You what's know? the um? What's the our submission still open? What's the deadline deadline for this? Sunday. Okay. Sunday at nine p.m. And so we'll t we'll pick the um top six and they're gonna um me and G Man. I don't know if you ever heard of G Man Entertainment, but uh, he's so. um he is uh um he's been doing this long longer than me, but he's a uh, like a management entertainment company. He does everything. You know they 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 do a lot over there. They distribute. They manage. They throw showcases. They also um, throw big industry events. Like, they got one at with Ashanti coming up at the Chartway Arena. But um, me and him get together twice a year, and we collab and do what we call Spring Fest and Fall Fest. And we have them at... We used to have them at the Norva, but then the Norva kind of strayed away from doing independent artist shows there. How, how come? Um, so then we start doing them at Elevation 27. So that's where we at now. Not, not to cut you off, um, uh -huh. how come? 
Did Nor- Norbert did that? I don't know. I don't know. What, 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 what did they say? What was their, like... I don't know. I, I guess they feel like it really just wasn't maybe probably lucrative enough for them, you know? That, that, that's my opinion on why, you know? But I, I don't really know what... Mm. But yeah, that was we we did what we do. We did a, about four shows at the Norva. You know, we would do and they were called Spring Fest. We were doing once a year, and they always were good good crowds. You know, like not sold out, but you know, how much is six seven hundred uh, people? How much is the Norva hold? Fifteen. Hundred. Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, now we at Elevation, um, and we've been there for two years now. And That's a decent size venue too. Oh yeah. We were just there we recently. For, I think the last um. I forgot what show it was. I was just there like like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so we do it. Um, we do Spring Fest there, Fall Fest, and you know we pack it out. It's always at, at least five hundred, five to six, you know, hundred people. You also um, touched on Coastal Media. You said uh-huh. that was a media company. Do you want to uh-huh. touch more on that? Well, um, it's it's um a promotional company like for prints. So like we just provide prints, business cards, flyers, posters, banners, stickers, um, uh, calendars, uh. Any trifle brochures, like any type of prints, we do it. Yard signs, we do it all. So y'all hit me up for that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, also wanted to ask you about, so I seen you brought out Wendy Day uh-huh. from Rap Coalition. Yeah. Was that last year? That was last year. Yeah, what was that? What was that about? So basically, I do these events um, once a year, and they're called um, The Experience, Open Studio Vibe Session. So I, I think I did my first one maybe in 2017. I, I can't recall. But anyway, so basically it was just because, like I was telling you earlier, I feel like a lot of artists are missing the learning curve, you know, of it, so of the business. So anyway, so I started doing those events, and they were basically just like big networking events. Producers come, artists come, everybody just come, and we network, and we, you know, we talk, and this, that, and the third so the last two years, I'm like, okay, let's take this a step further. We need to learn. Like, a lot of artists do not know the business side. They A lot of them don't care to know, but I'm going to do my part, you know. So two years ago, I, I don't know if you know Batman, which is yep. Dark Knight Entertainment. We did a pod with him. Okay. Yeah. So he was my speaker. And, um, Great Mandy. speaker. Great speaker. Great speaker. Yeah. Very knowledgeable. You know, Batman has done a lot. Like, he's been in this industry He was telling real. us about it. Like, he... The first time I... Just side note on Batman. Mm-hmm. The first time I ever seen him was at um, Slow Dive. Bro was throwing a... Uh, he was, like, shooting a movie in there. I forgot bro name now, but he, I just walked in and Batman was just oh. giving this speech about the 757 and just kind of just was how it we... Was Terrell? Terrell? Red Cup? Terrell? I think it was probably Terrell. I think it was, bro. I, some, yeah. I don't know why I forget bro name. It's something with a T, though. Yeah, but, um, but Batman was just giving this speech mm-hmm. about the 757 and how we all need to unite and right. do this shit. But, uh-huh. like, the way he said it was, like, hella inspiring. I was right. like, yo, who is this guy? I was like, what the fuck? Yes. I but love, that was my introduction to him. When I, I, I told him the other day, I, I really love Batman's whole life. Like, he is one of my people that keeps me going and keeps me encouraged and, like, pre, we need you. Like, don't stop. Like... He is, he, he, he is, yes, he's just amazing. Um, very full of knowledge, always willing to help, always there to encourage. Like, I really love Batman. And like, like I say, he knows so much. He didn't been where a lot of us are trying to go. Like, so anyway, so Batman was a speaker and I also had, um, Samandy as a speaker. Um, and yeah, so that was two years ago. So last year, I'm like, okay. And it was amazing. When I say it was amazing, it was amazing. Everybody learned. It was it was beautiful. So and I'm also, like, not to, also not to cut you uh, off. So this was like more of like, this is like a networking event. Uh-huh, and there's like correct. a speaker just kind of just te- teaching and, people about stuff. Correct. Yeah. And then, well, like I say, it started out as a, yeah, a networking, but it was a studio vibe session. So it was meaning to bring creatives together. Were and, they actually and creating work. there? Yes. Okay, okay. So we had like sectioned off. Okay. You know, like this part, this, you know, this hour we got the speaker. Then, you know, I always had it somewhere where they could record. So I always, I started out having them in studios, like big studios. So shout out to Biggs. I think the one that Batman was, it was in Big Studio. He had like a big warehouse. And then they could go, you know, link up and, and network and record. So, um, so yeah, so they were, you know, collab and record. So after that one, it was so amazing. I'm like, man, how am I going to outdo that next year? Like, mm. what am I going to do? And I was scrolling Facebook one day, Instagram, and I saw Wendy Day. I'm like, I need to bring Wendy Day here. So um, 
Shout out to Batman again. Batman is friends with Wendy Day in real life. Like, she's in real life. In real yeah. life. Like, real life. Like, he's really, you know, so I'm trying to reach out to her. Um, you can't DM her. I'm trying to, you know, find a booking email. Couldn't find anything. So I said, well, Batman. So I, I called Batman, and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to book Wendy Day. And, you know, he texted her. He shot me, a, you know, the booking email five minutes later. And, yeah, so, like, Wendy is... Um, yeah. Always has been one of my mentors. Always. Yeah, who, for people that don't know, because I'm actually not too mm -hmm. hip on her either. What does she do? Wendy, what, what hasn't she done? Like, Wendy, I don't even know how to describe her, but um, Wendy is the, the guru. Like, she is responsible for a lot in the music industry. Um, I, I don't even know how to put it into words, but... Wendy is... Because I think I've seen her. She's, like, on that podcast with the dude with long hair, uh -huh, right? right? Yes, that, I've yes. just seen them, like, random viral clips. That's oh, kind of yeah, all I know about she, her, Oh, yeah, but she has done so much. You have to look. You don't know who she is? Not really. i just seen her on, on that oh pod. Oh, my God. Uh, I've seen them, like, give, Wendy, giving, like, tips Wendy, on, like, music industry tips oh to artists. Oh, my gosh. Wendy, Wendy is... The main thing she is is an artist advocate. Like, she has created so many millionaires she's responsible for you know back in what 1996 cash money's 30 million dollar deal like really she, yes she is she has done everything she's worked with everybody tupac boots I, I mean i can't even what it, every, she is she's her you know about this lady she is her even just that she, cash money you can stop right there that's yes, crazy yeah. like she is her she is I and mean, that's just a tip of the iceberg like she is really her like um so Batman plugs you in with her. He knew her in real life. Knew her in real life. Hit her up. Booked her. Brought her here. Made it free for everybody, you know. Um, nobody had to pay. I'm like, we don't need no excuses for why. You know, because, again, like, I feel like we need to grow, you know. And I feel like a lot of artists don't grow because, for one, they, we don't know any better. Like, and sometimes we need people to lead us. So, hey, you know, like, what what we need to be doing to grow. So, um, yeah, so like I said, I brought Wendy here, uh, made it free for everybody, you know, so it was no excuses on, oh, I can't afford a ticket or whatever it is. And, um, and she was a guest speaker. She was um, a guest speaker. What are some things that come to mind? Do you remember, like, oh what, what, did she, what did she talk about? What, are some what did she talk about? Uh, um, what did you take away know. from it? Oh, man, it's... I don't know. I, w I was too busy being a groupie. Oh, we <laughs> like when she got out of the car. I just remember like, I, I think I cried. I was like, "Can I touch you? Like, can I hug you?" Hey, yeah. But I mean, she, you know, she touched on so many bases. You know, yeah. so many bases. Um, you, you know, think, just do you think she made an impact on the artists that were there? I, I think mean, she did. Yeah. Everybody. I mean, even to this day, I just think I got a tag last week. Like, um, a lot of artists took a lot from it. Now, whether they applied it. You know, I don't know. Even also, but, I, wanted, I kind of wanted to add, too, on just, like, the unity and the mm -hmm. scene and stuff. Um, I see a lot of people out here saying that we have, like, this crabs in the bucket mentality, mm -hmm. right? I kind of, I don't think we should uh, really look at it that way. I think we're looking at it wrong. It's mm -hmm. like, I feel like that, first of all, that's everywhere. Right. And I'm not it really, is. I'm not really not looking Virginia. at that as a Virginia thing. But I'm, I'm also past that. I'm looking at that as human psychology. Right. That's like, that's like if we're all starving. Right. Right now. I would say all of us as artists, we're starving, right. quote unquote, because we're not eating. So just imagine right. if you're in your city, it's famine. Everybody's starving. There's no food. Right. It's hard to think about your neighbor when right. you have to think about yourself and your family. Right. So I think that's what we're in right now. Right. I wouldn't necessarily like think about it as like this like uh this evil thing that we're doing in this area. We hate each other right. and shit like that. I don't think it's like that. I think we right. just need to see more people eating. Right. And then they'll be able to give back more. Right. I I, I agree with that. I mean, I feel like. I, I don't never use the term crabs in a bucket, but, you know, the hate, again, I I, th I also do. We we haven't touched on this, too, but I don't just do showcases in Virginia. I do showcases out of state. So I have this movement. I call, it's called VA Invasions, where basically I, you know, take a handful of artists and we go to a different state. Invade. Yeah, and we invade. You know, I collab with another promoter. You know, they bring their top artists. I bring mine, and we network, and we perform, and, you know, just that and the third. So... I've done been doing those again since 2017. That's just a special year, I guess. But um, and what I was gonna say in doing that, like I've done 17 of those, you know, going to just different. Yeah, so you've you done a lot of. You, you just touched on like five different annual events. Yeah. And now you're saying 17 of these. Yeah, 17. I'm a bad. I cut yeah. you off. You go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So I've done 17 of those. Got one coming next week. We're gonna invade DC. 
And I got another one coming in in May. We're going to invade um, Black Bite Week, which is in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. You know, it's a huge annual event out there. And we're going to be performing and invading out there, too. But um, how, how are you but, doing those things? Are you tapped in with people from those cities? and the, Like, you know about that connecting. scene, too? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're not just, like, calling some random venue out there booking a show? No. You're and, actually and tapped in with now that that area. is something that I want to do. I want to start putting together my own tours and, and doing that. But... But yes, I have not done that. So I'm just connecting with people there, you know, okay, whether yeah, it be um, somebody referred me, you know, like, because that's really how I started out. Like, my first invasion, it was in Atlanta. It was a friend of mine. I'm like, look, I want to start doing out of town shows. Who y'all know? So people connected me with people they know and, you know, whatever. But I said all that to say, um, being as though I've been to all these different states on social media, I'm friends with artists in like all of these states. And they all have the same problem that we do. Which is? So it, well, like you were saying about the crabs in the bucket and people feel like, oh, it's Virginia hate. You know, like all the artists feel like that in all the different states. Atlanta, the two. Like people, you know, want to look at Atlanta like it's so whatever. But they have the same issues. Like, I, I mean, I have so many friends in Atlanta and they all feel the same way. Everybody, but, in, I bet you underground artists in Atlanta probably saying shit like, man, these big artists out here don't want to see us eat. Yeah. The same thing that you know they try I mean? to say about, you know, the same thing. I also like the, that that fact of going to um, other pl- places and doing it mm-hmm. because I feel like it, you could take the mystery out of it. Right. As far as, like, everybody wants to go viral and it's just this, like, uncontrollable right. phenomenon that you really don't have any say in right. when it happens or how it happens. Right. But I, I, like, I think we can take the mystery out as far as going to other areas because right. just how we have a scene in this area right that exists in every yeah. city in the country yeah. so hypothetically if you make a connection with somebody in every state now you're tapped into all these different scenes can be tapped in together exactly. now ultimately we have probably a bigger fan base than mainstream artists exactly because that's the, also the mainstream artists are tapping into those to those right. fan bases as well too right but um so i think that's like a way of just like you're yeah, taking the mystery out of it right just putting in hard work and um building relationships right you know that's all it's about like building relationships and like like you say, just you know, you gotta move around out here. But you know that that's the main one of the main purpose behind the invasion is just to, you know, put us in front of a different network, meet new people, build with those artists, build with those promoters, and you know, just try to connect the dots as we go. Mm. But so okay, so yeah, so you gr- yeah. you drop out of college, mm-hmm. getting pregnant, that kind of leads you into this. Um, I guess really all I think the only other question I really had was the the manager question. So I know you're a young traps manager right now. Uh-huh. I was introduced to you, Gifted told me you were his manager. Uh-huh. I, was. I don't know if you're still his manager. What's I'm up not. with y'all? Uh-huh. But um if you want to touch on being a manager. Yeah. Being a manager is And seeing Gifted hand success as well. Because he's been going crazy. Yes, he has. Being a manager is tough. Like, honestly, I don't think that I would ever want to manage again. Like, if I ever stopped managing the two artists that I mean, I actually managed Young Trap and, and Triple Cross Spaz, which Spaz is not really active right now. You know, he hasn't put out any music since 2021, I want to really. I actually know who that is, too. Yeah. You do? Yeah. You know him? Okay. I do. Yeah, so that, that's my artist, too. But Did he used know. to be with that dude, like, No Slime? He that is no slime. Oh, that's no slime. He is the okay, same person. Okay, then yeah. <laughs> now his name is on Instagram. His name is No Slime Spaz. Okay, then. I'm, but that, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, it's the same person. But his, you know, technically his his rap um stage name is Triple Cross Spaz. Okay. But yes, that's the same person. So that's he's my artist as well. But like I said, he hasn't really been active in some time now. You know, I don't know if he's ever. I told him just come be my A and R. You know, because he he does that anyway. He puts he puts me on to a lot of these young artists. Like, be like, oh Capri, they dope. Check them out. You know, so he definitely helps me when it comes to finding new talent. You know, a lot of the younger talent anyway. So um, you said it's hard being a manager. What's the hard? It part? is. It's like, it's just difficult. You know, it's difficult. It's difficult. Um. You know, leading, trying to do the best that you can, you know, with the resources and what knowledge you know to lead, you know, uh, someone into, into, you know, try to help them in their career, which, you know, I know that I help my artists in what I do, but it's like, you know, you always want to do more. And it's it's just it's just difficult, you know, and it's something that I, uh, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard. But, mm. yeah. Hell yeah. I don't like management. <laughs> I mean, I like it because I, I like it, but I don't. It's it's just it, it's just really difficult, honestly. 
Like it's it's just hard, you know, trying like I said, just trying to lead these artists to where they need to go and it's it's a task. That's all mm. I can say. Hell yeah. Well look, um, is there anything else you want to touch on? Anything else you want to lead the people with? Um I think we I mean we we touched on a lot. I feel like we went into, we went into some things. Yeah, we did. Did you want yeah. to touch on Gift of Hand success and seeing him go up? Started. I mean, you know, shout out to Gift of Hands. He, he's uh, definitely doing his thing. Um, I've been rocking with Gift of Hands since 2017. Again, like, what is up with 2017? But, yeah, I met him. He came one of my showcases, open mics, actually, and um, and performed. And ever since then, you know, we've been locked in. Cool. We've been locked in. So, you know, he definitely um, been doing his thing. Definitely proud of him. All that good stuff. Hell yeah. Well, I appreciate you for coming through. Thank you. Um, we appreciate y'all for tapping in. All her links will be in the description. Um, yeah. We're going to see y'all soon, man. Add, add something cool to the scene. If you think the scene, y'all want to say that before we leave. If you yeah. think the scene is missing something or if you think the trash or the scene is trash, right? make it less trash. Do right. something cool. Yeah. yeah. I definitely agree with that. You know, I feel like people do a lot of talking, but what are you doing to help? Hell yeah. You know? What are you doing to help? We're going to see y'all soon. Peace. Oh, also, I do want to say shout out to our sponsor for this episode is Seal Media. They're a media company out of Virginia Beach. Um, you can you can get with them for all like different types of creative stuff. We'll have their link in the description. Um, but yeah, also mention us, you get ten percent off with them too. So, oh. hell yeah.